malnutrition results to diet-related non-communicable diseases and it can be classified into different forms such as undernutrition, inadequate vitamins or minerals, overweight, and obesity. Pregnant, lactating women and young children are the most vulnerable to malnutrition. In fact, 47 million children below 5 years of age are considered wasted, 14.3 million are severely wasted, and 144 million are stunted, while 38.3 million are overweight or obese. Around 45% of deaths among children under 5 years of age are linked to undernutrition. These mostly occur in low- and middle-income countries, and at the same time, in these same countries, rates of childhood overweight and obesity are rising. This is according to World Health Organization of 2020. According to Teeth, Sifa, and Narte of 2015, poverty is still a significant underlying cause of malnutrition. In addition, it increases healthcare costs, reduces productivity, and slows economic growth which can perpetuate a cycle of poverty and ill health according to World Health Organization of 2020. The National Nutrition Council stated that the government has been doing its part on how to decrease incidence rates of malnutrition. Despite the different programs and approved laws, malnutrition remains to be the major concern in the country. According to UNICEF of 2019, one out of three below five years old Filipino children are considered stunted, while roughly 7% of children are very thin for their height. In addition, a tenth of adolescent Filipinos are considered overweight. Increased susceptibility to disease due to poor health-seeking behavior, incomplete immunization, poor hygiene and care practices, and inadequate diet which having issues on both quantity and quality of foods are the causes of undernutrition. Based on the 2015 National Nutrition Survey of the FNRIBOST, 40% among below 5 years old children were stunted, 6.9% were wasted, 25% were underweight, and 2.8% were overweight in Soxergen region. Moreover, maternal malnutrition increases the risk of poor pregnancy outcomes including obstructed labor, premature or low birth weight babies, and postpartum hemorrhage. Severe anemia during pregnancy is linked to increased mortality at labor. With all of this, I would like to share an advocacy that focuses on maternal and child nutrition. Specifically, this advocacy will highlight first-hand experiences and ongoing strategies and implementations in the locality. Also, I would like to share possible recommendations to improve maternal and child nutrition in support to Republic Act No. 11148, otherwise known as the Kalusugan at Nutrition ng Magnanay Act and Republic Act No. 11037, otherwise known as the Masustansyang Pagkain para sa Batang Pilipino Act. In order to have a glimpse of the current situation, I will be showing to you the milestones of LGU Malungon who has been performing well on nutrition programs. Malungon is one of the seven municipalities in Sarangani Province. It is a landlocked town consisting 31 barangays. 14 of these are classified as geographically isolated and disadvantaged areas. The nutrition program in the municipality happened during the leadership of the late Felipe K. Constantino, wherein his better half, Delia Constantino, became the Municipal Nutrition Action Officer. Followed by the leadership of the late Teode M. Padernilla, wherein Violeta P. Anfone became the next Municipal Nutrition Action Officer. In 2007, the turning point in nutrition began when Reynaldo F. Constantino became the mayor. According to him, I am not just a leader who will build your bridges. More than building roads and bridges, I would rather be remembered as building people's character and capacities. It was also noted during his term from 2007 to 2016 that nutrition was prioritized. People empowerment 
access to government services and behavioral change programs were implemented. Together with Rosalyn Lee Constantino as the Municipal Nutrition Action Officer, several programs and activities were introduced to the community which are as follows. Among these programs and activities, the following made a huge impact towards the people. Lingap sa barangay or the local ingenuity in alleviating poverty. This brings the services closer to the people, especially those in far-flung areas. Convergence of services from different government agencies and weighing of preschool children, feeding advocacy and promotion of good nutrition to mothers, pregnant and lactating women. Kapitan Garden or the Kabalikat Ako sa mga programang inihahandog tungo sa angkop na nutrisyon. Blaan and Tagakaulo Translation of the Ten Kumainmets Gumni Gumifat Dad Nga Malungon Nutri-Care Center or a facility for nutrition education and in-house feeding of severely underweight preschool children. The 31 RFC Kamalik or the Halfway Homes and Established Breastfeeding Room in Strategic Areas. Moreover, sustainability of nutrition programs is part of the priority under the leadership of Attorney Maria Teresa D. Constantino, in which malnutrition is addressed in a holistic approach by integrating potential contribution of several sectors such as education, early childhood care and development, illegal drug prevention, sports, and housing. Programs and activities include Enhanced Lingap sa Barangay, and food security wherein communal garden has been continually improved through the MTDC RFC Nutri Farm. Her leadership emphasizes the importance of the following unity and cooperation, presence of local nutrition committees, coordination, monitoring, and operational platforms, human resource for nutrition, incentives and alignment system and resources for nutrition. There is a limited turnover of the Barangay Nutrition Scholars in Malungot as the Municipal Nutrition Council discourages Barangay Chairpersons to replace them. Furthermore, it is also important to acknowledge that the most challenging part is encouraging indigenous peoples to follow health and nutrition practices which may not be fully consistent with their traditions and culture. As a solution, the municipality provided the IPs with equal opportunity to all nutrition programs and basic services, provided with health education in addressing the challenges in malnutrition. Lastly, the importance of IPs as barangay nutrition scholars and barangay health workers in addressing language barriers and ensuring cultural sensitive programs. Across different administrations, Malungon has implemented supplemental feeding, vegetable gardening, complementary feeding, lingap sa barangay, nutrition information communication and education, pabasa sa nutrition, and adopt a child program. Talking about adopt a child program, may the story of Irene inspire all of you. Ani about sa among kinabuhi si Irene Jane Chipanda to. Tungod sa panahon nga ako naging imnaw, naghimuungiog ka ng pagpangita sa mga malnourished ng mga kabataan tungod kaya malungon sa pinakataas in terms sa malnourished. At ito nga panahon akong gipasurvey ang mga malnourished o all the daghan ang malnourished sa malungon na among nakita pero Isa si Irene Jane Pandato nga pinaka severe na uh, malnourished na bata sa edad niya nga isa ka tuig o doka bulan nagkilo lang siya o uh, 3 kilos. From that time, the municipality continued in giving care and attention to Irene. Fortunately, Irene's recovery was fast. During paydays of the employees, many gave money as part of their support to her feeding. There were also NGOs who extended their support. 
isa sa mga realization na hindi lang ako kung di ako ang pamilya na isa gidi ay kung kailangan ang bata mapasagdan sa giniganan. Nakatagpod gini sa mga o ka ng uh, kalipay. Nakatagpod siya o ka ng dugang kusog sa mga ani sa ako ang bana kay nami ka uban pa sa balay. So, karun, Uh, iha, uh, naana siya sa ika grade 10. Supportahan ko naman siya. Kay isa na siya sa mga mga obligasyon sa mga pagdawat sa iya ha. Uh, isip uh, katawahan sa Diyos na gihatag sa mo ang so responsibilidad da mo ang pagtuy-tuy o pag, paghatag sa iya sa iyang mga panginahanan. So the local government unit of Malungon, through the convergence of the municipal nutrition office and the municipal agriculturist, we have initiated uh, one of our best practices in fighting uh, COVID-19 is the food always in the home program, which is so-called FAITH. We have initiated the search for outstanding gulayan in the backyard garden in every household, in the community garden, and the model farm family. This project encourages the families to develop and establish their faith garden so that they have the access for nutritious foods, organic vegetables, and also augment their income as so-called as the income generating project. All of the efforts made by the different administrations resulted to the following. Awards and recognitions. 2004, 2005, 2006 Green Banner Award, 2007 Crown Award, First Crown and Maintenance Award in 2008, First Crown Maintenance Award in 2016, Second Crown Maintenance Award in 2017, and the National Nutrition Honor Award in 2018. Therefore, this is a call to all of us to work together to achieve and improve maternal and child nutrition. For the parents, that behavioral change is vital and it can only be done if all parents will understand the importance of maintaining good and adequate nutrition not only in their children but in all members of the family. For the LGUs to formulate responsive policies and programs which are sustainable and to show actions not for publicity but for genuine public service. Importance of strong political will collaboration and partnership with other agencies in order to provide effective, equity, appropriate, accessible, and safe health services. And for the healthcare providers to intensify health education campaigns and to continue extending quality services in the community. Let us all make an impact and to be part of the solution to end malnutrition. Before ending this advocacy, let me share to you the words of Helen Keller. Alone, we can do so little. Together, we can do so much. This is Cesar J. Nalias III and my advocacy is on maternal and child nutrition. Thank you for watching.